name is Kelsey Letterman. Um, I'm a certified clinical medical assistant uh, at Baylor Scott and White, and I work for the Off region. Um, I started my very first job was in retail, um, doing customer service. Um, and I actually started working in the medical field pretty young. Um, I started doing clerical work, um, working in a medical call center. So mostly just making appointments and taking messages for patients. Um, and then I, I liked working with patients. I liked the medical field. So I moved um, uh, internally with my company to um, an in-office clerical role. Um, so a lot of the same type of things, um, but more direct patient access and, and interaction, being able to speak with them face to face. Um, uh, from there, I actually started facilitating uh, patient uh, education classes. Um, so, you know, learning through just working in the medical field, I learned a lot and was able to help um, facilitate these education classes. And that's really what made me want to um, have more hands-on uh, care with the patients and, and be more face-to-face -face with them. My typical day-to-day -day is, is rooming patients. So when you go to a doctor's office and the person that calls you to the back, um, you know, it takes you back into the room where you're gonna see your doctor. Um, I go through their, you know, uh, medical history, surgical history, medications, um, prepare them for their appointment and then obtain their vitals uh, for the doctor. Um, at my clinic, we also handle our own in-basket. So um, anytime people call in for their doctor with questions um, for the clinical staff, those come to us first. Uh, so we handle as much as we can. Um, we also have a secure patient portal where patients can message their doctors directly. Uh, that also comes to our clinical in-basket. Uh, again, we go through as many of those as we can and answer them ourselves and then kind of direct them to the provider or, or wherever they need to go. CNA is a nursing assistant. Um, typically, though, uh, they work in like a hospital setting or um, home health care. A lot of times you'll see CNAs. Um, and uh, they don't typically they don't administer medications. Um, th they do take vitals, so a, a lot of the a similar roles. Um, but a certified medical assistant or a CMA, um, we're able to administer medications, um, perform phlebotomy. Uh, there, there's a lot of different like little titles um, as kind of an entry level into the medical field. Um, those are two really popular ones. Uh, medical assistants typically work in an outpatient setting, so more your doctor's offices um, versus like a hospital. It's going to vary based on um, the rate, you know, where you live and and uh, your certification. Uh, it's not required to have a certification in Texas to be a medical assistant, um, but a lot of positions will look for that. Uh, I, I believe like a starting salary for a CMA in our area is like 14 to 15 dollars. Um, like maybe 14 to 16 is, is a pretty standard range. Um, I would say someone who's been in their position for a while has some experience, um, more of that like 18, 18 an hour is probably a little bit more median. Um, I have heard people in our, in our area making upwards of, of $20, um, just depending on their skill set and their experience um, and exactly what they're doing in their, their day to day. There's, um, like national certifications um, where you can get um, a CMA or a certified medical assistant certification and it's good anywhere in the US. Um, they also have more like local ones where it's just good in your state. Um, every state has a little bit of different qualifications on what they want you to be trained on. Uh, so that's something to think about if you're looking for a certification program, um, you know, decide if, if you do potentially want to go to another state at some point, it might be best to look for a, um, a national certification. Um, and then there's some that have the clerical piece like the program I did, um, which again allows you like in a private practice setting um, where they may have the MA do not only the the clinical piece, but as well as checking in patients, dealing with insurance and basic billing things, 
um, that can be really helpful because then you have a little bit of background in that. Um, they also have certifications that are just the clinical part of it. Clinical skills that we perform daily um, are, are getting vitals, uh, so learning to take blood pressures, um, count respirations, and um, count someone's pulse. Uh, I think medical terminology, a basic understanding of that is, is really important because you will be obtaining people's medical histories and surgical histories, um, going over their medications uh, that they currently take. Uh, so a basic understanding of that medical terminology. Um, some people perform phlebotomy in their CMA roles, so drawing blood. Uh, we, we do that where I work, so I have a phlebotomy piece to my certification as well. And um, so I'm able to, to draw blood from patients who are there in the office. I think the most important would be communication. Uh, it's probably the most important skill that you can have. Um, our job is, is to act as sort of a liaison between the patient and their provider. Um, we're, we're data collectors. So um, we're, as, as the patient's first clinical point of contact, it's nice to be able to develop a rapport with your patient so that they trust you and that they feel comfortable giving you their history and telling you what's going on so that you can relay that information to their provider so that they get as, as much information as they can before even seeing the patient. Um, and another one is, is patient satisfaction or, or customer service. Um, I'm ultimately being a medical assistant is a customer service role. Um, and a lot of our patients come in and, and they're sick or they're not feeling their best. And you know, it, it's important that if we can make that experience just a little bit better, easier for them, then, then that's really our goal. The most rewarding thing I think is, is being a part of, of someone's healthcare journey and um, helping them to feel and, and become physically and mentally, emotionally better um, is, is incredibly rewarding, whether you know that just be from taking someone's blood or, or just rooming them, getting them ready for the doctor. Um, it can be as simple as that. But you know, like I said, the, the challenging piece is that sometimes people um, are not feeling well when they come in to see us. Um, so that, that can make them right from the get-go, not as happy as a customer would be coming in to do something more fun than going to the doctor. So those can be challenging to remember that they're not feeling well, that it, it's not personal, and and to try to help them through that, that is more one of the challenging pieces that we deal with. But ultimately, I think that leads to the reward as well, especially if you can turn that experience into something more positive for them. I'd say the first thing would be to check out the different kinds of certifications that they are, um, that, that there are out there. Um, again, some are national, some are more local to where you are. Um, and then there's different pieces if you're thinking, you know, if a, if a private practice is kind of more around you, if you're not around big clinics, big um, healthcare groups, um, a private practice might be a better option. And they typically have their MAs do more of that clinical and clerical role. So maybe a certification that does both of those things could be good. Um, I know a lot of uh, junior colleges also offer um, an Associates of Applied Science degree, um, which is something that can kind of transition right into that medical assisting role as well. So that's kind of another option if, if you're thinking of going to, um, to school and not quite sure. Um, though that's a great place to start as well. Uh, you'll get those, those science and, and health classes. In your training, uh, you'll get that externship or hands-on training with a preceptor who um, can, can show you, you know, you'll administer your first vaccine and medication, um, learn to take the vitals, um, you know, do perform phlebotomy if that's part of your certification. Um, and once you're done with all, every certification will have a certain amount of hours um, required to, to complete in your externship. Uh, once you complete that, you can apply to positions um, as a certified medical assistant. Um, for a group like Baylor Scott & White, um, they do require that you have a certification in order um, to administer medications and do all those things in the clinic. 
Uh, so once you apply and go through the interview process, um, we have a, a training program that we do internally. Um, so our people come aboard and, and you're matched up with a preceptor and you um, basically it's like an, another externship. You'll work with that person directly and um, kind of figure out exactly how we do think how our rooming process works through our um, group and and depending on the specialty or or um, family medicine or whatever your or primary care that you're working in you'll um, kind of see their specific day-to-day -day process and um, then within a few weeks you'll start working in your normal role um, it's a pretty quick process which is is nice um, there's not a lot of training to be done beforehand Overall, medical assisting has a projected growth um, of over 19% in the next 10 years, um, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Um, specifically in Texas, it's growing incredibly quickly. Um, there's a, um, it's expected to continue growing in the central Texas area. Um, and it, I mean, that 19% is a growth rate that's, that's much higher than a lot of other careers right now. Um, specifically, it's, it's not a career that seems to be going anywhere too quickly. I think it's a great entry um, or introduction to the medical field if it's something that you're considering. Um, there's not, like I said, the program, the training programs are, are typically fairly short, um, you know, versus the traditional nursing role, um, you, you can go through the certification programs fairly quickly. Uh, they do have accelerated versions a lot of places as well. And you kind of get that on the job experience to see if the medical field is something that you're interested in. Um, there's not a lot of, uh, once you become a CMA, there's, uh, that's pretty much your role. It doesn't have like a, a path, like it's not a stepping stone to become a nurse necessarily. Although the clinical skills that you'll learn in your role would definitely help you if you chose to go to nursing school. Um, but if you're someone that's kind of on the fence about the medical field or just kind of want to know more, I think it's an, a great introduction. Um, you get that face-to-face -face patient care. You can learn the clerical aspect. So you have um, that and the insurance and billing, plus you get the clinical, um, you know how to administer medications, you can draw blood, which are all things that nurses and, and other roles within the medical field perform as well.